Hello everyone, my name is Tex Albe and I would like to share my honest thoughts on Loria. Loria is a 2018 traditional real-time strategy game. The game has the trinity of base building, resource gathering and army management you would expect. And it is a homage to Warcraft 2 and 3. Visually the game looks fairly similar to Warcraft 2. It does have the slightly cartoonish, slightly exaggerated art style of Warcraft 2. It's also fairly colorful and it does have, in addition to its mainly fantasy elements, some slightly high-techish elements. The game is in 2D. It originally had a pixel art style that can still be found in the demo, but that was abandoned during one point of the development because it apparently cost too much. And it has to be said that this game here is a two-person project so it didn't come with a huge budget, nor with a huge team. The game does pretty much do what you would expect. You've got two resources, you've got gold and lumber. Lumber can be cut from forests on the map, and gold can be found in gold mines scattered over the map. The game takes a couple of other elements from Warcraft 2. You do have your headquarters that can be upgraded twice to access new units, buildings and technologies. You do have tech buildings, production facilities, you do have a variety of units, both land and air based, there are no naval units. And you do have defense buildings, as well as some buildings for your resources, everything you pretty much expect. The same goes for the unit roster. You do have basic melee units, ranged units, advanced melee units, some flyers, spellcasters, support, some support units, as well as artillery, that's expensive but also powerful. And in addition to that, you also have hero units. And these are more like a feature you'd expect from Warcraft 3. The heroes can be resurrected at shrines if they die. And they can also carry items that increase their stats. And they can also level up, choosing from four different abilities. There's one ultimate ability and three other ones that can be leveled up once you gain enough experience. Granting your hero new abilities, some of them are passive, some of them are active. And it's also some consumables. And whenever your hero does level up, you can choose to increase certain stats to make your hero maybe more powerful, faster, or possibly buffer, whatever you like. The game also has a couple of other niceties from Warcraft 3. You can select more units. There's still a selection limit. You're limited to selecting 24 units, but since your food limit is 120 and most units cost more than one unit of food, that rarely comes into play. Generally, you don't select more than that many units. The game also has stuff like auto-casting. You can have healers cast their healing spells automatically. Same goes for buff and debuff spells, so you don't have to micromanage all your spell casters. And you also have stuff like workers automatically repairing damaged buildings they're close to. Stuff like that. It is very much Warcraft 2-ish in its structure but it does lift a lot of niceties from Warcraft 3, which make it a bit more accommodating. The zoom is also a bit more forgiving than in most Blizzard RTS games. The game does come with two factions, Order and Chaos. The two aren't radically different, and most of the units have an equivalent in the other faction. For example, the Order faction has a basic swordsman, whereas the Chaos faction has a lancer. There's the Archer versus the Huntress, who has a crossbow and there's a couple of other things. There are some differences. Only order units can cast healing spells, but the chaos units have an ability that allows them to regenerate faster. So there is always some sort of equivalent, but it's not always equal. And there are some differences. It's not just the same units with different stats. You do actually have some units that maybe are slower and maybe deal a little less damage, but are tankier, or maybe some units are a little bit stronger, but also cost more. So there are some differences in both sides. And both sides also have a variety of different heroes, melee heroes, ranged heroes, support spellcasters. Again, that's an element that you will be familiar with if you've played Warcraft 3. The game is currently single player only. It does come with a 60 mission campaign, or rather two campaigns. They are consecutive, divided into eight missions each, and a skirmish mode as well with a number of maps you can play on. There's also a number of biomes. You do have your green biome, your snowy one, wasteland. Again, not too much of a surprise. Loria's story focuses on Dalt, who is 
the leader of the Force of Order, and he's fighting war against the Force of Chaos, because Chaos wants to take over the world, naturally. The story starts out fairly basic, but it does have a couple of twists and turns that I didn't quite expect, and while it probably isn't going to blow you away completely, I think it was actually above average and did have a couple of nice turns. The missions are what you expect. You have some missions that are indoor missions, that are tactical, you get no base. Some missions where you just build up your base and destroy the enemy. Some missions where you have to hold out. Some missions where you have to destroy certain buildings or enemy units. It's a nice variety, pretty standard, but nothing bad. And it's going to keep you busy for probably 8 to 12 hours. It really depends on how much time you want to spend in the missions and what strategies you use and how good you are at real-time strategy games in general. The game does offer four difficulties from easy to impossible. On the lower ones, the enemy doesn't really attack too often. On the highest ones, the enemy does get bonus resources and can overwhelm you quite easily. So depending on what your skill level is, you're going to probably find a difficulty that's suitable for you and that makes the game fun for you to play. The AI is fairly decent, it does build mixed assault groups, and while it's not outstanding, it does use a couple of tactics such as prioritizing units, using all the spells and abilities of its heroes and spellcasters, and doing stuff such as keeping artillery in the back and moving it back when it gets threatened, so it is going to give you a decent challenge, and in the campaign, obviously, you're going to face often overwhelming odds, if you don't mind that, then the AI is going to provide us a good challenge, but then again, since this is a single player game and the main focus is on the campaign, even though you can play skirmish mode, you probably expect to have the odds against you anyway. A couple of things that should be mentioned as well is the upgrade system. You can level up your heroes, as I said before, but you can also upgrade your basic units. So you can, in addition to the tech upgrades, you can also have them earn experience by killing other units. And whenever they gain a level, they gain a new ability. So there's a pool of abilities and they gain them randomly. They could, for example, earn additional sight, speed, attack speed, fast regeneration or more hit points. So whenever your units level up, they become a little bit more unique. They're still not fully unique. This is not a role-playing game, even though it does have role-playing game elements. But it's nice to see that your units don't always just gain more hit points or become a little bit stronger, but that you can ha actually have units that are a little bit different and that might be worth preserving over other units so the units are not quite as expandable as they could be. The game does have a couple of bugs but they are fairly minor. Occasionally units get stuck at certain buildings and the pathfinding can at times be a little bit awkward but overall it's not too bad and the maps are generally fairly expensive so there aren't too many bottlenecks where units get stuck too badly. So overall, the technical issues are minor and the developers have been working on ironing them out. Loria gave me a very strong Warcraft 2 Beyond the Dark Portal vibe, so if you like that game specifically, but don't mind a couple of modern niceties with regard to interface and controls, then you should give this game here a go. Thanks for watching, and I shall see you next time. Take care and goodbye.